In May 2025, India or Pakistan had a fifth generation fighter jet. The sky would be saying something entirely different. The stealth capability would have controlled the air, commanded the battlefield, and maybe ultimately won the war. Fifth generation jets are not just the future, they are the new gold standard of modern warfare. Both countries understand this, and the race for acquiring them is on. So, what makes a fifth generation fighter so powerful? Unlike the 4.5 generation jets presently flown by India, such as the Rafale and Su 30 MKI, or Pakistan's JF 17 Block 3, J 10C, and F 16 Block 52. Fifth-generation fighters are designed for stealth and speed and cyber warfare. They are almost invisible to radar. Can supercruise fly supersonic speeds without afterburners? And will use next-generation sensors. The sensors will also use data fusion platforms that combine data from satellites, radars, and drones to provide pilots with superior situational awareness on the battlefield. With the addition of AI, improved agility and smart weapons fifth generation jets will change the game with this in mind india has kicked off the amca advanced medium combat aircraft program an indigenous twin engine single seat stealth fighter jet being developed by the aeronautical development agency ada and hindustan aeronautics limited health with some help from private sector organizations like Tata Advanced Systems, the Indian government has set aside $1.8 billion for initial phase, with plans to have an operational prototype by 2028 and full rate production by 2035, with a minimum of 120 jets. However, there are challenges ahead. India does not have an indigenously developed fighter jet engine, the AMCA will likely have to initially source an engine from the USA efforts to pursue joint. Development with the USA has not proven fruitful. In addition to funding limitations for defense, if the AMCA is prioritized, other important projects may be sacrificed. Also, there is the fact that HAL delivers aircraft at a slow pace. Thus, modernization may go beyond 2035. In the meantime, Pakistan may get 5th gen capability much quicker, not build, but buy. Apparently, Pakistan is looking at China's J-35, likely to be operationally available by 2029. In fact, the first round of 30 jets could arrive by 2026, with Pakistani pilots training in China now. All told, Pakistan could have 50 to 70 jets delivered by the late 2020s, creating a time advantage. While the earliest J-35s may not have had the full capabilities of US F-35s, they will still represent a more capable variant than any 4.5 generation. Jets that are currently operating in South Asia, Pakistan is also looking into Turkey's Khan previously TFX stealth fighter, which is still in prototype form. If Pakistan enters the program, it could procure 50 to 70 units in the early to mid 2030s when Turkey would be done meeting its own requirements. While costly, owing to Pakistan's strong bilateral relations with China and Turkey, it could create favorable unstated avenues of procurement such as long-term finance, joint production, or technology transfer. India also is not ignoring their own foreign options. The US F-35 is the best fifth-generation jet in the world, but it is utterly out of their budget. At $100, $110 million per unit, considering the maintenance costs of about 30 lakh, are a piece. The complexities of logistics make it impossible for India to buy a sizable fleet of jets. It might buy a small fleet of say 36 or 50 jets, but that's only for strategic missions. The Su-57 is a cheaper alternative, but lacks the same level of stealth. With the Su-57, India could procure 50 to 70 jets completely finished, and possibly locally produce another 100 to 150 jets. In fact, Russia also also offered to license produced using the already existing Su-30 MKI production facilities to ease this transition. But with Russia having only produced 6 to 12 
Su-57 for its own air force and targeting a modest 76 combat capable aircraft by 2028. It is unlikely large exports to India. Before the 2030s at best, India could see a handful of aircraft by 2030, with significant amounts only possible in the late 2030s. But foreign purchases have their own risks. They may cost $5 to $15 billion, cash up front and $30 to $60 billion over their life cycle, which could pressure India's defense budget and impact. India's ability to develop the AMC Aeon Spectre needed to keep pace with China's continued development. India needs to balance short-term demands against long-term requirements, while ensuring its operational requirements are met and there are no unplanned delays to develop a reliable platform with Chinese stealth technology rapidly transferring from concept to operational aircraft comparatively. And while they may not have full sensor fusion capabilities or even AI at first, Pakistan could have a very modest fleet of J-35, operational in little over one to two years. They may not be representative of the aircraft being delivered to the PAF, but they ought to be better than a current 4.5 generation fighter and could be upgraded over time. By achieving that capability, Pakistan would temporarily have a slight edge in gaining air superiority, at least until India catches up with imported aircraft or its own AMCA program. In conclusion, it appears that Pakistan is on track to get fifth generation jets than India, while India aspires to develop a more advanced system for future self-reliance. The future decade will decide who gets to write the rules and define the power. Dynamics of the airspace above South Asia 